Hey guys, it's Tarot and Beyond. In today's Pick a Card style reading, we are going to be looking at your breakthrough. I've been getting so many synchronicities around breakthroughs and seeing this message coming through a lot and Spirit really prompted me to sit down and do this reading. I had the idea for this last night and then this morning I checked my tarot app and the card of the day was the sun and the message was about some kind of a breakthrough. So I, I took this as a very strong confirmation that there are some breakthroughs coming for those of you who are drawn to this message. So as usual, we have the three groups today. Group number one is the image of the man on the mountain. Group number two is the marathon runner in the desert. And group number three is the group of people in a business environment celebrating a win. So select the image or images that you're drawn to. If you're drawn to more than one or maybe even all three, that's perfectly fine. You may just have multiple messages or multiple breakthroughs that you may be experiencing. We're going to be looking at how, why, and when in the reading select your image and we'll see you there. All right. Hi, group number one. Welcome to your breakthrough reading. You have the image of the man on the mountain here. So this one was particularly significant to me. It felt like the breakthrough was this path of light that you followed. You can see the path winding its way very clearly up the mountain and then that horizon or the sun rising from behind this man as he's triumphantly standing there in all his glory. So I do feel like you have been working at this for quite some time. You have followed, I just heard the word arduous. You have been on an arduous or treacherous, treacherous mountain path, which tested you is what they're showing me boulders in the way. Um, visually, I'm seeing that there was cliff faces that you had to like edge your way through. Um, there was gravelly, rocky ground that you, it was very much on an incline and you had to very slowly there. Oh my God, they're giving me such visual things right now. I'm seeing you like clawing your way up this mountain with bloody fingernails and 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 exhausted and, and lugging a backpack with just the bare essentials on your back. It's like, this what? No wonder they gave me the word arduous. Holy crap, group number one. This was hard. And I feel like this is where you've been you've been at for the past while, possibly years. And and this breakthrough is here, finally, now. It it's here. And I, I almost feel like I want to cry because it's been so much uh, effort that you've been putting into this, so much hard work, so much bravery, I want to say, because like all of the trials and tribulations you've had to go through, it took a lot of bravery and courage to overcome and to continue to persist up that mountain. There were several points in this journey that you were given the opportunity or you could have given up and you didn't. So I think that is a breakthrough in and of itself. You've already won simply because you didn't give up. So let's take a look at some of the information that Spirit wants to bring through specifically for you in this breakthrough moment, group number one. I'm, I just want to say I'm proud of you if you've been drawn to group number one or to this reading in general. You have put in a lot of effort and you deserve this breakthrough, especially you, group number one. You've earned this. You have the King of Cups. This could have been a lot of emotional work. This could have been, you know, trials and tribulations in the emotional realm. Yeah, they're showing me that, that crawling, scraping motion again. So it's almost like you had to, you had to bloody yourself up a little bit dealing with some of the harder emotions within yourself. Um, I'm seeing sensitivity being a big thing here, like facing your, your inner sensitivity and, and overcoming these hurdles, overcoming these emotional tests. Yeah, it, that's what it feels like. Yep. Look that f grief, grief. Oh my God. That's, this makes so much sense now. No wonder it was arduous. Grief is a painful emotion. And you know what I've never noticed before? Has it always been this way? The cups are spilling blood. The water is red right outside those cups. And this one's green. I've had this deck for years. It was actually the first tarot deck I ever bought. And I recently set it aside and I had it sitting in my windowsill since the last tarot 201 reading or tarot 201 um, class that I taught. I just needed, I felt like I needed to let it sit and, and recharge because it had been through a lot. Like I was using it to teach lessons. I'm noticing the blood and I've never seen that there before. So this is a confirmation of what they were showing me in the visuals. Um, clairvoyantly just from your image it was like this blood sweat and tears that you've put in literally blood sweat and tears oh my god 
The moon, you have had to face some serious psychological setbacks, group number one, psychological and possibly energetic, but I'm getting a lot here to do with the psychology and the emotions. So grief, pain, fear, guilt, shame, distortions or illusions of the mind, projections of the mind, um, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of, of heartbreak, a lot. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the Three of Swords came up in this spread, but you've got healing here, the star card. And I, I that's the breakthrough, really, truly. Group number one is that you have conquered this emotional landscape. You have overcome some serious, serious emotional and psychological setbacks. M mental health could have been something that you've struggled with for years now. Um, or it could just be that you've been through a lot emotionally, like traumatic events or physical losses, deaths, things like that could be significant. It doesn't have to be literal deaths, although that I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But even just losing things that are really important to you or that you invested a lot of energy into, things that you spilled blood for that then spilled out and there was nothing left. It just feels like deep, deep loss. But you've managed to master master this You're, you've mastered it the tower uh, yeah that's that's like the um the image that they were showing me of this like gravel coming down the mountain and you're like trying to scrabble your way up it it, it was it was a lot for you to handle, group number one. It was a lot for you to handle, but I'm seeing this breakthrough coming at the hands of your determination. Like your unwillingness to give up is what is leading you to this victory, to this success, to this breakthrough. You're, you're rebuilding. I'm seeing you're going to the promised land. I just heard promised land. So it's kind of like this oasis. Yeah, the oasis. And it's reminding me sort of of like being in the desert and seeing a mirage and then you move towards it and there's this hope that, oh my God, I finally made it. And then it disappears. And it's like that kind of heartbreak that I've seen in the past for you. And you may have had your hope and your faith tested again and again and again. And I'm seeing that this is the actual moment where that mirage is not a mirage. Like you actually get to the promised land or the promised city. You've made your way across the desert. There may be some messages for you in group number two. I haven't done that reading yet, but that's the image and the channeled message that Spirit brought through for their group was um, somebody doing a marathon in the desert. So there could be something about that as well, but let's get some more information. You have the sextant and this is a navigation tool usually used at sea so again I see a lot of water here and it's interesting that group number two is being referenced because group number two is the desert which is all like sand and air so um, they're opposites right so there's something about navigating you've navigated your way through this and you know what sextants do is that you look through it and you find a star like a point on the horizon that gives you a reference or context for where you are and then you navigate based on the uh, the measurement of the actual horizon. Basically, like you look at the star, you find the horizon, you calculate the difference, and then you navigate or plot your course. So I'm seeing like, again, with the star here, I feel like you have this inner north star that kept you moving through a lot of this loss. I just heard the word detriment, like you had things that were to your detriment, you had to face a lot on this path. It was definitely not a straight line. They're showing me the path in the moon. It's like how winding it is and it looks like that path of light going up the mountain but it is the path of light you have the luminaries here the moon and the star so even if it was dark you still had those luminaries guiding the way yeah and in your image it was the path of light and then when when you reach that top of the mountain the sun finally rises you come out of the darkness yeah soap you had to clean a lot emotionally you had to clean things up they're actually giving me a reference to i think it's is it hamlet or is it Macbeth, where he's like out damned spot he's got like bloody hands and he's feeling so guilty and he's trying to like clean himself of the guilt i don't know why i just got that message maybe you maybe you feel like you made a lot of mistakes in your life and i'm getting karmic retribution i feel like you 
are really hard on yourself, group number one. I don't think that you're a bad person. I don't feel that from from this group or from this energy or from you. But I feel like you think or thought in some way deep down that you were a bad person. I was. I did mention shame, and then that reference to Macbeth is like guilt or Hamlet. I can't. I always get those two mixed up. So there's something about you needing to forgive yourself to be able to move on from this or, or, or this was the whole part of the process of this path was you being able to not give up on yourself to continue to maintain hope and to work on your worthiness and healing your worthiness i feel like that was a huge thing here and being able to cleanse yourself of this perception they said perception of guilt like it wasn't even the truth wow you've got the prism prism of light and by the way this is my new oracle deck synchronicities oracle shameless plug here you know i got to promote myself um but i just felt called to mention that i forgot to say it so the pre-order is in the description box below you've got this prism of light with the rainbow coming out of it so i'm really seeing you having been able to clear yourself the soap right you navigated and stayed true to your course you felt intuitively the direction you needed to go even if you didn't see it even if it felt completely overwhelming you managed to clean things out i'm seeing a lot of emotional spiritual psychological cleansing and then through the cleansing you kept your vessel clear the mind right this is like the prism of the mind let's say and so any thought that comes into it will get refracted clearly into these pure colors rather than being distorted as can happen with the moon it's like if there's distortion distortions in this crystal in this prism then the colors come out warped distorted muddled muted so I'm, I'm seeing that you've had to do a lot of clearing. I just heard recovery from depression, and I also just got recovery from addiction. So for some of you in this group, you've been battling addiction and possibly depression that it was either a symptom of that or a direct root cause of that or two separate groups of people. But yeah, I'm feeling those two energies very strongly. You have the scarab. This is a really positive sign of, I just heard regality, so regal, I'm hearing birthright, birthright of the stars. This could be connected to Syrian Lyran energy. I'm also seeing Cassiopeia in my mind. And they're showing me the Big Dipper. Um, and I'm also getting Canis Major. Oh my God, so many constellations. <laughs> so many constellations. What is this about? They showed me the lightning striking on the tower. And this is like divine intervention or divine will. They just said, oh, divine will and the crown. The crown was knocked off your head, but you're getting it back. Yeah, see that he's got his crown on the head. You, the, the crown was knocked off your head, but you're getting it back and you're stepping back into your divine birthright. You've cleansed and purified yourself and they're showing me like baptism energy with the star card here. It's like she, she goes into the waters and she comes out pure and clean. Baptism of the soul, they said. Your soul has been baptized in the fires of transmutation that's what they just said your soul has been baptized in the fires of transmutation this is really powerful very very they're showing me the color red in both of these the red jewel here above the scarab and they were showing me the red in the king of cups robe that's been a symbol that they've been bringing through lately. I've noticed that at the last reading I did they were calling out the color red and I wasn't sure if it was like a reference to the root chakra or to, oh, the blood, they said. Right. Oh, my God. The blood. I forgot. Blood is the color red. And there's red. The red is the lower spectrum of light because it's a slower frequency. That's why it's on the bottom like that. Same thing in the energy body. That's why chakra system is the rainbow body because it's, it's um, lower vibration to higher vibration from root to crown. They are talking about root and crown here. They're talking about root and crown. Okay. And something about your blood. They said your divine birthright was taken from you. There's something in your blood, in your bloodline, group number one, that was a birthright for you and it was taken from you. Through guilt and shame, they're telling me, that your, your mind was distorted by these illusions. You were made to think that you were something other than what you are. You were made to believe that you were unworthy when you were nothing but worthy. They said anointed one. You are the anointed one. 
So this was your divine birthright to have these blessings or to have this spiritual power or to have this success in life and it was taken from you. And you had to claw your way out of hell to get it back. Oh my God. Like I'm actually crying right now because I can feel this. Like I'm li- like I'm feel like I'm living it. To be honest with you, I have lived it. <laughs> so I get it. Um... Group one, this is intense. This is so, so, so intense. You have the the globe, the world here. They're showing they said the world keeps turning, and they were showing me the globe rotating like that. The world keeps turning. And it's making me think of like Superman in the original Superman movie when he when Lois Lane dies and he's so stricken with grief that he flies around the world backwards so fast that he turns it in the opposite direction and turns back time and brings her back to life and saves her. Oh my God, and it was an avalanche that killed her. And they were showing me the avalanche and that you were like clawing your way up while this avalanche was coming down. I have full goosebumps right now. (laughs) This is crazy group number one. I knew these readings were going to be powerful, but like this is really, really powerful. So you, they're telling me turn back time. Yeah, they're they're saying something about turning back time. Get one more, they said from the top. Okay, you have the incense. They said holy rite of passage. Okay. Okay, they're showing me the measurements on... The stand of the globe here. Do you see how there's like numbers going around? And they're giving me the word ecliptic. I think that's something to do with the eclipses and the time that I'm filming this is just a few days before the first eclipse of this year's eclipse season. These are timeless readings, but um, eclipse season or eclipses could be significant here. They're telling me Uranus, Uranian energy could be very very powerful in this shift to reclaim your divine birthright yeah reclaiming your divine birthright purification of the soul they're telling me cleanse your energy group number one um if you are on the verge of this breakthrough right now and you're not feeling it quite in this very tangible way that i am cleanse your energy physically wash your body Um, smoke cleanse your body with incense or sage or palo santo or cedar or sweet grass whatever you have on hand or is available to you and do some kind of a ritual of purification is what they're showing me because they're showing me the um, the water in the star card and it's kind of like that ritual baptism like go jump in a lake or (laughs) i um (laughs) Or even just like make a spiritual bath for yourself and set the intention that this is going to be a ritual cleansing and kind of like dunk your head under the water and then come back up. There's something about the this ritual of water that is going to be very symbolic. It doesn't, like with anything that we do ritual wise, it's not, it's not the power of what, what we're doing with the elements of what we're working with. It's the intention. It's the intention of what we're doing. It's the, the conscious energy that we're putting into it and the belief that we have. So it's like you doing this for yourself as a representation of how far you've come and also an acknowledgement that you are worthy and that the distortions that you were made to believe that were true are actually false that you are not a guilty party you are not unworthy you are not broken you are not bad Um, if you've ever had any of those thoughts consciously or unconsciously you're deprogramming yourself from those and this ritual bath is going to help symbolize that release and clear you from the in religious terms it would be like the sins of the past but it's they said sins of the father. Okay, it could have even been something in your bloodline where there was a lot of distortion. But I don't believe in sin. I only believe in alignment or misalignment. And there's nothing wrong with either one. Both of them lead us home. So it's just a matter of what you want and and the intention you have as a soul. So I'm seeing you coming out of this period of pain and suffering and coming back into your own sovereignty because that's what I get from this regal energy and the crowning. It's like you're being anointed or appointed to this higher role within yourself as a God sovereign being, meaning that you are worthy of that power, that light, that, that mountaintop because you belong there. That's who you are. That's what you are. 
Okay. Let's get a closing message from the channeled deck that Spirit and I created. I actually feel that one that bent a little bit. The path forward is multifaceted with many twists and turns. That was the, the path that they were showing us in both your images there. The path isn't always straight and direct. In fact, it shouldn't be if you're doing it right. Evolution is circular, so expect and account for turns ahead. I'm actually feeling that I'm going to get one more from this deck. But look at that diamond. And you got the prism. There's, it's really about your energy body, group number one. As you clear your energy body, you clear out these distortions in the blood, these distortions in the mind, in the, in the soul blueprint, all of it. The stuff you need will be provided or made available to you. The resources you need, be it knowledge, support, money, love, or time, will be presented as you continue to pursue them. They said one more. We're going to get one more. The flowers are blooming. The seeds you planted long ago are now blossoming. You may have been tending to them diligently all this time, or you may have forgotten what you planted. Either way, the flowers are ready to be enjoyed now. Oh, look, there's flowers in this card. I just noticed that. So group number one, your breakthrough moment right now is to cleanse and purify your energy from any lower vibrational distortions of the mind, thought, or emotion, because you are done with that. You have completed that cycle. You have navigated your way. You have endured so, so much. And now you're, the flowers are blooming. And even though this path is very winding, and this isn't the end, the path will continue to be winding, but you, the clarity is so much more multifaceted, beautiful, and I'm seeing value as well, too, like the diamonds. They're telling me diamonds are forever. Yeah, diamonds are forever. <laughs> you guys are seriously, it's like infinite and infinite wealth and value, infinite clarity, infinite connection to the divine. And everything you need value-wise, like physical value, the, the resources will be provided for. They're showing me that backpack that they showed me in the initial image um, or the visuals clairvoyantly that you were carrying on your back. So everything you need is ready for you there at that top of the mountain and you are right there. You are right there. You'll get up there and the, the flowers are blooming. You'll be able to sit and have a rest. So that is what I have for you, group number one. Your breakthrough moment is a massive breakthrough in your spiritual sovereignty and your personal autonomy when it comes to your mental health and your emotional well-being. I'm sending you so much love and healing. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a blessing here. This is universal life force energy coming straight from the divine for your greatest and highest good to help to cleanse the soul, purify the mind, and expand your potential for the embodiment of this birthright. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you and we'll see you in the next reading. Bye. All right. Hi, group number two. Welcome to your breakthrough reading. You chose the image of the marathon runner in the desert crossing the finish line. And the energy that I got from the prompt and from the image is that you guys are really endurance, like your endurance marathon type of people. You've been in this for the long haul. This is like a lifetime's worth of work or something that you've been investing a lot of energy into, but you've had to go slow and sort of pace yourself to make sure that you didn't completely deplete your resources as you were moving through this environment that was less than hospitable. So it's like being in the desert, not having all of the resources you need or, or really none of them at all, but still being able to continue on because of perseverance, because of persistence, because of this dedication. And also I'm hearing training and they also just gave me the word honor. So something about honor, doing this for the honor, um, something about it kind of gives me, no, not glory, actually, they're correcting me. I was going to say it kind of feels like honor and, and glory, but no, it's not about the glory. Oh, they said honor, honorable merits, they said. Oh, okay, sorry, I was misinterpreting what they were saying. You're receiving honorable merits for the endurance that you've invested. They said, no, not just the endurance you've invested, but you're receiving honorable merits for the achievement, the achievement that you've accomplished. And they're showing me visually the guy getting across the finish line at the end and, and receiving that gold medal and the acclaim that comes with that or the recognition he's being, he's being awarded. Okay.
So let's take a look at some messages here for you, group number two. And it's interesting because your, your reading was referenced in group number one, even though we hadn't done this reading yet. So I'm curious to see what comes up. You have the chariot. Talk about, oh my God, the chariot is all about movement. All about movement forward, progression. And it's a lot of the times readers will, will interpret this as like fast movement. And it can be because it's about travel, but technically speaking, the charioteer is not moving. I mean, you can see he's not like riding into battle. He's just standing there. And so what I usually interpret with the chariot is, is planning and strategy. It's like he trained for this. He's a general. He knows what he needs to do. And he's got this strategy or this blueprint in his mind of what he needs to accomplish and how he's going to do that. And then he sets out and does it just like a marathon runner has to plan every step, but they have to train. They have to make sure that they have that level of endurance to be able to sustain that long haul journey. So I do see travel and movement, but it's more like the even behind that, the effort that went in is like, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's been a lot. It's, I feel like you've been building something because they just showed me the castle city walls in the background there. So you may have been building an empire, you know, running this marathon in, in regard to business or something that you were trying to conquer because the charioteer makes me think of... Um, you know, like winning battles, trying to overcome battles in your life. The magician is manifestation. And look at all the yellow solar plexus chakra. Being able to put your will and intention into physical action and effort to make something happen, to make it manifest. So I do feel like building. They're giving me builder. They're saying master builder, something about master builder energy. Master builder races could be significant. Yeah, th th this energy of, of like, I have a plan of action and I'm going to execute it and I'm going to make it real. The star card, this did come up in group number one. So now I'm seeing that correlation here. Healing, purification. They also just gave me the word sacrifice. There were things that you had to sacrifice. You know, like um, when you're running through the desert, you have to sacrifice that immediate gratification food, water, they're, sh they're actually showing me water. It's like you may have skipped some water breaks or you didn't take as many as you needed because it would have slowed you down. But then at the times that you really needed it, you would you were able to take that water break, whatever that means, and refuel enough to continue to keep going. I'm seeing the little bird on the back in the tree there and uh, I'm getting air energy. I mean, the star card is Aquarius. And I'm getting Gemini energy as well. Mercury. Yeah. And Libra. Okay, so we have literally all the air signs here. Justice card. I'm hearing karmic balance. Yeah, karmic balance here. All of the effort that you've invested is paying off or is about to... Be, no, it is paying off. They're saying it's paying off. I'm hearing the word dividends. And two of cups. More Gemini energy. I know that that's not actually what the Two of Cups represents, but that's what I'm feeling, just, just what I'm getting intuitively. And the Ace of Cups. This could be to do with love. No, but they're showing me those cups again. They're showing me like a runner in the desert and there's like people holding out cups and he's like, no, not right now because I can't slow down. Um, but then when he's absolutely bone dry and like needs that water being like okay thank you and and taking it and then continuing 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 so there's something about i think receiving the support that you need you may have sacrificed that because you you were trying to do it all alone the magician is a very individual independent energy same same thing with the chariot you may have felt like i need to do this alone or i need to prove this to myself they're bringing me back to the energy of honor again it's like something that you needed to do to honor yourself, oh, or to honor the Holy Spirit. It was a test of faith in some way. So it's like if you got too much help, it would have actually detracted from your sense of confidence in your own independence to do this your, your own way and to do it in your own time. Because I do see that this, this has been taking a long time. But now I feel like there's going to be these resources that are coming in you know, as you're, as you're crossing the finish line, now you're getting all of the cups. Now you're getting 
the resources, the the replenishment, that's what they said. Repl- yeah, and the star can't talk about replenishment because that's what's fair, right? If you, for, if you forego, if you sacrifice those things initially up front, energetically, karmically, they need to come back eventually. So to balance out. So it's like as you cross the finish line, now all of these cups are coming in. So you're going to get a lot of support. You're going to get a lot of, um, I'm hearing handouts, but like in a good way. It's not like you're begging and being like, help me, I need help. It's like, no, you're getting handouts because you've accomplished something and it's visible in some way. Um, and people are proud of you. I'm getting this energy of people want to honor you because of what you've been able to do. People want to, I'm hearing privilege. It's a privilege to connect with you. People people are seeing you in your true power and, and respecting that. That's what I'm seeing. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Respect. And, and honor, but like, it's, uh, they are giving me the word birthright that came up in group one. So I will recommend go, go watch group one after this, if you feel so called, if not, that's fine. But there's, there's a lot of, there was an, that was an intense reading. You have the pillar, which way does it go this way? The pillar. Yeah. You have those pillars in the justice card too on either side. So the pillars need to be balanced. They're giving me the word foundation. This was a foundation you were building. And you you kind of had to do it alone. I don't know why, but you had... Well, no, I do know why. <laughs> they told us why. <laughs> right. You had to do it alone because you needed to prove this to yourself, that you could do it. And prove to the... They said to the Lord or to, to, to the Holy Spirit or to the divine that you could do this in the name of God, they said. Yeah, they're telling me it's rite of pass. It was a rite of passage. Astronaut. Not of this world, they said. Not of this world. The magic that you possess is not of this world. And it was stripped from you so that you could endure this test, so that you could undergo, they said, and undergo this test. And you did endure. And now it's like the magic that you have that is not of this world it comes from the stars other galaxies they said andromeda could be significant now you're going to bring that in now you're going to be able to use it wow okay you have the phone and they're showing it they're showing it to me ringing i'm seeing it clairvoyantly and hearing it in my mind like ring ring and this like the the receiver's like shaking on the on the thing so you're going to be receiving some calls accommodations i just heard accommodations or commendations yeah people want to celebrate you something you're doing is visible the star card can sometimes talk about be like the star you're you're the center of attention the spotlight is on you something is balancing out i did just get a message about legal legal things balancing as well so if you've had like outstanding debts or contracts either in the soul or physically in the 3d realm those are going to be dealt with as well i'm seeing soul contracts to do with relationships being cleared this could have been part of what you were enduring or maybe that's why like let's say for example you're running through the quote-unquote desert of the relationship zone and people are giving you these cups saying like hey be in a relationship with me and you're like no i need to do this alone i need to I need to prove to myself that I can I can do this and not be dependent on others or something like that. And then you did and then you do it and you get to the finish line and now you've got this beautiful partnership that's been waiting for you either it's somebody that you've already been with or somebody that's new coming in. I'm seeing that phone ringing off the hook. You're going to get a lot of offers. Um you've got the seal. The seven seals they just said. Seven seals. That's talking about the chakras. Chakra system. They're, they're giving me the word upgrades. Upgrades to your chakra system. Okay. You have the scroll. The knowledge you seek. It, it's, it was always within you. They're giving me soul blueprint energy. I, I, I usually associate the scroll with the soul blueprint. And especially with the seal here. It's ancient knowledge that comes from the stars that was kind of cut off from you and you're going to be getting it back. It's going to be flowing in endlessly. They're showing me like an endless fountain of replenishment and renewal so energy in the in the light body i'm seeing physical healing psychological healing 
and physical success in your endeavors, like success in your business. If you if you own a business or you're an entrepreneur, especially, this is going to be a big breakthrough for you in that arena. And you're going to get a lot of calls or you're going to get a lot of approvals I'm seeing as well. Like people are approving of you or maybe you're getting... Um, the stamp of approval from somebody in a position of power and authority. Yeah, they're showing me this image of a judge saying like, I, I'm giving you my stamp of approval and you're certified in something or you're, you're getting some kind of authentication that's like a legal authentication of what you what you can do or what you've accomplished. And they're giving me the word accommodation again and commendations galactic knowledge yes that's what i was getting from these two cards it's like you you have this galactic knowledge within your soul blueprint group number two and it's it's being made accessible to you now you only got a tiny piece of it they're showing me like a tiny little piece of the pie and they're also showing me the number coding of pi like 3.14 and the symbol of pi where it's like that pi has infinite numbers and they were talking about infinite flow Something about the mathematics of the soul. What is this? The lily pads really just st stood out to me here. Lily pads could be a significant symbol for you. This could be in summer. Summertime could be significant because I'm pretty sure that the lilies, water lilies bloom in summer, don't they? Yeah. Something about summer summertime is going to be significant. And they're showing me people meeting at a beach, two people meeting at a beach or on a beach where the water meets the sand and you guys did have the the desert and and we were talking a lot about water in group one and you have this water here so yeah it's like something about a beach driving to the beach manifesting a vacation they just said oh accommodation right accommodation that's like like a hotel and and uh, there's something about a vacation here. You're going to get a call. Somebody's going to offer you a vacation. Maybe you win something. You, you have to sign some contracts or you're getting approval for a loan or, a, or, or some, I'm not sure what it is, but in some way there's going to be an offer. Maybe it's, maybe it's because you're unlocking this, this deep wisdom within you and then you're sharing that in some way or you're manifesting. This could even be to do with manifestation. Like you maybe specifically manifested this thing vision boards, intentions, things like that. Maybe you scripted it, you wrote it down. They're showing me something about a vacation in a beautiful location on a beach with full accommodation. <laughs> All the Asians. <laughs> you guys are getting your needs met is, is, is deeply, deeply what it feels like. Your needs are going to be met and then some and then some and then some. And it's like where you felt like you were deprived before you're going to have all of your needs met. And the foundations or the, these like pillars that you've built in your life are finally going to be holding up the empire that you've built. They just gave me the word flying buttresses. Um, and architecturally speaking, flying buttresses help to sustain the weight of intricate structures, you know, like cathedrals and stuff like that will have those flying buttresses that come out to the side to help to load bear. So there's something about people that may be coming in as those flying buttresses in your life to support what you've built and to help you to build more because they're actually showing me the higher up you build, the more outside support you need. Otherwise that tower start, starts to lean. They're showing me the leaning tower of Pisa. This could be in Italy or Rome or Greece. The pillars remind me of Athens. Yeah, Europe, Europe, Europe or um, Mediterranean could be a location, a destination location for this, this retreat or this vacation that you're being offered, something you're being called about. <laughs> Maybe doing some kind of... Um, I'm getting guided meditation from this little guy here. So maybe doing some guided meditations would be helpful here to connect to this energy and to the, the wisdom in your soul. Or you may be guiding others in meditation, working with people who do this as well. Something about that could be significant. Or teaching manifestation. That's not for everyone, but I, I'm getting that energy, so I have to mention it. If you have a strategy for manifesting, you may be sharing that. The power is in you. You always have the power within you to create your reality and be the leader of your own life. 
Trust yourself to be responsible with this power and begin using it through conscious and intentional choices and actions. Was I not, this is just confirming everything that we were getting. First of all, right down to the color yellow, right? Um, action, I did talk about that and intention. And I was also talking about creating your own reality, which is what the magician is there as well saying. So this is really just kind of confirmation of the rest of the messages in your reading. I do feel the th these cards, this one and this one on top. No, not the one on top they said. Okay. What can you do to soften today? There's a need to soften your approach to life. What does softness mean to you and what does it feel like? What do you need to be able to soften even a fraction today? So I feel like you've had to be really hard here. Group number two, because you, you had to endure a hard or harsh environment to get to where you are. But now that you've crossed the finish line, it's time to soften. You're getting out of the desert. You're able to take off those. They're showing me shoes caked in the dust of the desert. And it's almost like they're so worn down that the soles are almost bare. And you're, it's almost like your feet were on the earth running and they were hot because it was like burned away. And you're able to take those off and put on some like soft, fuzzy slippers and a nice house robe. And you've got a, a, a bottle of Fiji water is what they're showing me, like a cold bottle of fresh Fiji water. Fiji could be significant. Um, and put your feet up on a, on a nice poof in a hotel room on vacation. Like this is a vast difference from one state of, of, of where you were at, one environment, one operating system to this new one so they they do really want you to soften and know that this power within you is not going to go away it's not going to be taken from you everything that you've earned you you earned because of what you've alchemized within yourself so even like let's say worst case scenario um what you've created physically the empire you've built or what you've manifested is is lost or taken away guess what you have the power within you, you can make it happen again. And you won't have to go through that same arduous process that you did the first time, because you learned to embody this energy, you learned to master your power, you recalled it to you, you healed yourself, you anointed yourself, you unsealed um, this power within you. And so you can just replicate that. And it's kind of, they're giving me stories or, or references to like, um, uh, billionaires who who build an empire and then somehow out of like a twist of fate it crashes down they're still able to bounce back and then they build another one and it's even more successful so it's kind of like that theme that spirit wants you to know that that's not necessarily going to happen it's just giving you peace of mind in this in the knowing that no matter what does happen you are the leader you are the magic you have the power and so no matter what happens you can always rebuild you can always create something more yeah they're giving me a, a reference to gladiator the movie gladiator with uh, russell crowe such a good movie i love it um even though it's a bit violent for me but uh th there's they're showing me um in the gladiator he oh right this is I did mention uh, like a general he was he was a general in the Roman army. And then I can't remember I haven't watched the movie in a while, but he gets he gets sold as a slave into, you know, fighting in the arena in the Colosseum or what have you. And he has to fight for his life. But he's a leader. He's a general. You can take the general out of the army and put him into a slave environment, but he's still a leader. He's still a general. And that's exactly what happens. He rises. He he leads the men. He, he sticks to his integrity. He manifests change. So it's not about your environment or your circumstances. Those things don't change who you are or what you are. People go up and down in life all the time. It doesn't change who you are and the power that you have to change your circumstances or the value and worth of who you are. So you will, you are bouncing back. And even though this breakthrough is here for you, there's going to be even more to come, is what they're showing me. More breakthroughs to come. Like this is just one of many breakthroughs that you're going to experience. But they, they are giving you the go ahead to soften and relax. You don't have to be so hard in this next phase of the journey this next leg of the adventure. 
<laughs> they're showing me somebody driving the car on the highway and putting it on, uh, not autopilot, what is that called? Like cruise control. Cruise control, yes. <laughs> You're able to relax and just let things operate on their own because what you've built is now able to function in a balanced way kind of on its own or you're being given what you need yeah so that's what i see for you group number two um spirit really wants you to know that you have you have earned this you are worthy and you will continue you will continue to create but right now they want you to focus on receiving so open up your hands and receive from the divine and soften into this next stage of the game which is going to be all about accommodation acclaim and peace it feels like peace and satisfaction contentment so i'm sending you lots and lots of love and blessings from my heart to yours for your greatest and highest good in this breakthrough may it serve your soul in your evolutionary growth and beyond i love you guys and we'll see you in the next reading bye all right, hi group number three, welcome to your reading. You chose this image of the salespeople or business people celebrating. It feels like some kind of a sales win or accomplishment. Maybe you've hit a goal or you've maxed out on something or there's something that you've achieved here. There's a massive celebration. You know, it's not like they're just having a birthday cake or something. It's like real elation at having accomplished something huge a milestone is what i just heard the word milestone came through so a milestone in your business in your in a goal that you've been wanting to achieve maybe in some kind of a financial endeavor that you've invested in or implemented in the past that's what i'm getting very clearly so um yeah i feel like there's something you've been persisting at you've been trying to to make happen and it's like this breakthrough is going to involve that investment of time or energy or even money because they are talking about finances a lot in this group that's just visually what they're showing me that is going to pay off i knew it look you can right before i'm like they're showing me money in my in my mind clairvoyantly and here we have the ten of pentacles and this is this is why it's it's like you're jumping for joy in this boardroom or you know this metaphor of like this business success because the ten of pentacles is really like the full monty i just heard that's what is that the full monty i think that's a movie i've, I've never seen it um there's something here that's like going the whole, why are they saying the, the whole nine yards? They're giving me like movie names. I'm also hearing The Pursuit of Happiness, which is the movie with Will Smith where he's going from door to door selling whatever, I can't remember what it was he was selling, something kind of outdated and then he, he innovates or he persists in some way, he comes up with something and then it becomes extremely successful. That's kind of what I'm seeing here. They're also showing me Bill Gates. And they're showing me um, Google in the in the garage. There's an image I, I saw online uh, of when Google first got started and they were like operating out of the garage with like a banner printed with the, with the name Google on it. It was like, you know, every business, every successful billionaire business has to start somewhere. Everything has to start somewhere. Um, and I'm seeing this, this 10 of pentacles. It's like you took that ace of pentacles the seed of an idea or an investment of time energy or money and you've you've like managed to quadruple it or 10x it you know and uh you've built an empire here you're going to be celebrating the success of this achievement towards this goal of building this empire two of wands i heard conquer the world <laughs> you're going to be conquering the world group number two um I feel like you've been tested a lot with this uh, or you've you've tested a lot of different theories or approaches because they're showing me pinky in the brain in my mind. And if you guys remember that show, Warner Brothers, um, it was like always on right next to Animaniacs. And I loved watching those cartoons as a kid. But pinky in the brain was like um, this show of this very genius mouse who always had these ideas of how to take over the world. But he always had to go back to the drawing board. He always kind of like it failed in some way and he always had to go back to the drawing board. But he was really highly intelligent. Um, but he had this like sort of inept <laughs> pinky. What are we going to do tonight, Brian? Same thing we do every night, pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> it's like, I feel like you guys have been 
not trying to take over the world, but you're just trying to build a world for yourself that feels lucrative. Um, they keep giving me the word investment, but I feel like, again, you've, you've had some failed pursuits or you've had some trial and error that, you know, you've had to contend with as you've been contemplating what it was that you wanted to achieve or how you were going to achieve that. They are giving me the word strategy. Your strategy had to change so many times. I'm seeing you adapting and overcoming and adapting and overcoming very innovative group this one group number three you guys are so innovative and you're able to take what you learn and integrate it in a really neat way where you can then package it in in something of a new form and if that doesn't sell or that doesn't work or whatever it is if that's not successful then you take what you learned from that and adapt it so like each step of this journey even if there was failure quote unquote failure, it's like failing forward, failing forward towards success. So it's all part of the investment is what Spirit just said. Oh, it wasn't even just an investment of money. It was like an investment of your willingness to try and fail and then learn from that. Um, and they're giving me the quote from Benjamin Franklin. I didn't fail a hundred times. I found a hundred ways that didn't work towards my success or something like that. I'm paraphrasing there, but they're also giving me the word plagiarize. And they're giving me this quote around, um, if you take something from someone else and try to make it your own, that's plagiarism. That's copyright infringement. But if you take from many different sources and use it to prove a point or to get your message across, that's considered research. Ah, so you guys have been researching here. You're not plagiarizing anyone. It's, that's why it's innovative. It's, it's new because you're taking all of these different ideas and modes and ways of doing things and you're integrating it, amalgamizing it, and then creating something from that. Really cool. You've got the four of pentacles. I'm hearing protect your ideas, group number three, because especially if you have a lot of business success here, you want to make sure that you're not plagiarizing anything accidentally or that there's no copyright infringement you might want to get um a patent or um yeah copyright something that you are doing that they, they keep showing me all these brands like google warner brothers all these successful brands so it's like you've got to copyright it you've got to make sure that there's legal documentation that you own this is what they're telling me and they're giving me the example of brat stalls they're showing me brat stalls was there a legal issue with brat stalls that i'm not aware of because i don't know why they're showing me brat stalls okay uh well i mean brat stalls were very successful and they were kind of they were like along the same line as barbie but very different and so there's something about there's something about doing something your own way that might be a little similar to somebody else's, but it's very unique to you. And that's maybe why you kind of need to just cover your ass a little bit with some kind of um, like legal disclaimer or legal copyright. I'm not sure. Uh, they're showing me that you've been sitting on something, group three, that you've been kind of waiting something out. Have you been sitting on an idea? Have you been sitting on a project that you haven't released yet? This could be the time to release it. Maybe you've been planning or strategizing how you're going to do that. Uh, let's get more information. Six of Swords. You've been sitting on something and there needs to be movement. But maybe you need to move to a new location so that when you're in that new location, you can... You can launch this thing or you can share this thing or you can start to build. Yeah, they're giving me movement energy. The movement is important. Maybe a movement to a new home or a bigger business because they did show me the example of Microsoft or, or Google or whatever it was in the, in the garage or in the basement. It's like you need to expand. Maybe you need a location. Warehouse, they just said. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Group three. <laughs> Something about needing more room, for sure. Um, King of Swords, this is an idea. This is a big idea, they're, say they're saying. This is a breakthrough idea. This is a breakthrough reading. So yeah, this is a big idea that you've had. They're showing me the brain again with his big old brain, his big old noggin. It's like you you got a big idea and it's going to be, it's going to be a breakthrough idea. It's going to be really popular, group number three. Like all of these very successful... Um, I feel those two cards as well. 
all of these very successful brands that they've referenced in this reading, it's going to be like that. It's, it's the, the type of idea that really blows up and becomes successful. And that's why you kind of have to make sure that you're doing it legally correctly um, or that you have the resources. The, t- the, 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 the They keep saying physical space. You need the physical space to be able to accommodate whatever it is that you're building. Yeah, there's something about manufacturing. If this is a physical product, there there could be upgrades in like what you're how you're able to manufacture that. If this is still in the idea stage. I don't think for I I think for most of you who are drawn to this group, it's past the idea stage. But if this is still in the the idea stage, they're saying to um, flesh it out, like start making things more physical, start investing, especially if you've been kind of holding on to this idea and sitting on it and not doing anything with it. Invest in it financially. If you have to get a loan, um, that could be part of the legal aspect of it or like the get financial backing or use your savings or something towards this. This is not financial advice, okay? Like obviously this is a general reading. Use your intuition, make good choices. But I'm seeing that if this is still in the idea stage and it is a brilliant idea, it does need the air. They're showing me being air, airing it out like it needs to be made physical. The Hierophant. Hmm. I'm seeing order and structure. There, There is a need for that. Maybe this is you teaching something. Because the King of Swords can be about communication, teaching, public speaking, writing sharing knowledge and so can the hierophant keys of knowledge that you are sharing with people they're showing me a a preacher on a pulpit something that needs to be shared you have the ace of cups as well your emotional offering they said emotional offering oh they said will not go to waste your emotional offering will not go to waste if you pursue this, oh yeah, talk about, holy crap, look, 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 okay. <laughs> same, same energy. This emotional offering is going to be very successful. This this could be something that you have, some kind of holy knowledge about, some kind of holy knowledge, sacred knowledge. And you're going to be popping bottles, right? Because you're making sales or you're upgrading your facilities or you're moving homes. This is your breakthrough, group number three. This is your breakthrough moment. You're going to be popping bottles of champagne and celebrating this win. And it's going to go worldwide. You've got the globe. Worldwide distribution, they said. Worldwide distribution. Oh my God. No wonder you're going to need bigger facilities or... Maybe you're distributing yourself or your knowledge worldwide from a new home environment, but it's like you need this bigger space. There's something about having bigger space that energetically impacts the outcome of what you're creating. So if you've been trying to move to a new home, a new location, something like that, um, they're showing me that that's going to be successful. I had a feeling, you know, when I was looking at the Hierophant, it kind of looked like the Justice card to me. And then now we have the Scales, which is kind of like the Justice card, so... Yeah, there's, um, okay, what they're showing me is actually that the demand is going to outweigh your ability to produce. And that's why they're saying you need to upgrade your facilities. It's like so many people are going to want to buy or invest in this thing or to get this thing that it's like you need to, you need to upgrade group number three. I don't know what you're doing, but if you were drawn to this group, it feels like some kind of, um, intellectual or physical or technological product and you are going to need to scale up quickly quickly and that's why i think they're talking about here consulting the right people because they are bringing me back to if you're trying to take over the world you need to have the right people around you who know what they're doing and who can help you to do this Um, because they're showing me pinky and it's like maybe the reason that the brain's ideas failed where it was because pinky was kind of inept <laughs> it's like it's not it's not saying that like you're gonna fail because people around you don't know what they're doing but it's like you kind of need to make sure that you and the people around you are on the same page and you're operating from the same level and you're working towards the same goal 
um, and, and hiring or delegating or working with people who have this knowledge or expertise in a particular area and whom you can trust. I think that's really important here too. Making sure that you can trust these people so that uh, your business is successful because it feels like this reading is very business oriented. You've got the, I heard SOS, save our souls. Um, I'm hearing bailout, corporate bailout. What is this? They're showing me somebody who has been through a corporate environment that failed and was able to bounce back from it or recover from it. They were able to learn from it and then take that knowledge and apply it into how they're helping other people to build or grow their businesses. You may be working with someone like this or this could be you, I'm not sure. But it's like they're going to help you tip the scales in your favor and you're going to be celebrating. So if somebody comes in and wants to work with you or you're pursuing someone who has this level of expertise, of course, vet them and make sure that their, their credentials are on point. But I'm seeing that this person is really going to save you from an environment where you're drowning, possibly in debt or possibly in like too many orders and not being able to fulfill them, something, something like that. This person's going to help to save you. You've got the bubbles. I heard fresh idea. Fresh idea. New idea. I feel like you guys are just so creative, group number three. Like you are the innovators of this world. You are the visionaries. You are the dreamers. You are the big thinkers. You don't play small and you're not meant to. You're meant to innovate. You're meant to create. And sometimes I think maybe that might be overwhelming. You know, like speaking from my own experience here, I get so many ideas sometimes that it's like I don't know which one to do or I get overwhelmed with how to how to pursue that or the strategy or the steps to take to physically practically make that happen. And it can it can lead to a lot of sort of stagnation and they're saying don't let that happen. Take action on this thing, move towards it because that progress is going to show quickly. There's going to be some kind of like a launch that's very successful. Um yeah or these ideas are going to continue to bubble like the champagne bubbles it's like it just kind of bubbles to the top you're rising to the top yeah i rise to the top the cream of the cream of the crop i rise to the top i never eat your pickles your pickles are flop <laughs> a better yen of terminator like arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> never play you out like as if my name was veda yeah i feel like you guys are um first of all you're gonna have a good time doing this like you're gonna be having so much fun being successful in what it is that you're pursuing. And I think you're going to meet some really cool people and be on the same page with them. And you're going to like bounce ideas off of each other in a good way. And it's going to be, it's going to be successful, very successful. You've got the 3D glasses and they're showing me a movie theater. Some, something about a movie. And you've got the tickets. Yeah, something about going to a movie. Maybe this person takes you to a movie or you watch a movie that has inspiration for you. They were giving us movie references in the beginning. I forgot. Gladiator. We just referenced Terminator and Star Wars in that song. Um, something about movies. Is this in the film industry, perhaps? Is this a script? Because um, we were talking about writing. Is this uh, the legal rights to a story is what they just said the legal rights to a story. Maybe it's your story, a memoir. Um, something that will be published or publicized is what they're showing me. Or it could be a reference to a movie that you recently saw that has some kind of an archetypal story to it that reflects the journey that you're on. Okay, okay. Um, you've got the Buddha. And I'm hearing the word brass. Brass. What is brass? Why? They're saying brass Buddha. But this is a wood Buddha, so I don't know why they're telling me brass Buddha. Maybe this is a specific reference for someone, or you'll see a brass Buddha, and it will be a synchronicity, and you, you'll remember this reading, and it will make sense at the time. Something about a brass Buddha, and they won't give me any more information on that. They just keep repeating it, so... I think that's specific. 
eggshells, birthing this new idea into reality, making it real, very, very real, like it's tangible. And the infinity sign, infinite wealth, this is going to be generational. So this is going to be something that's going to go on long after you are gone. Group number three, like I'm seeing like a legacy, right? Um, like, uh, like Google will go on after or Microsoft will go on after the, the people who created it. I don't know all their names, but you know what I mean? It's like, this is a legacy. Oh, wow. Be kind to yourself. You've been through a lot. Don't add to your own suffering. You deserve a break. Give yourself some leeway and compassion. Maybe this is like you, you need a little bit of a break because you've been working so hard. Go easy on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Rest and recuperate. I just heard rest and recuperate. Maybe you just need to go see a movie. <laughs> Group number three, go see a movie. There could be some inspiration in that or um, some confirmation. And it could just be a nice rest for you, especially if you're like me and you like movies. I'm such a cinephile. I just, I love movies, shows, video games, um, books, stories, like anything, anything that has to do with stories. I, I, I'm obsessed. <laughs> Okay, we have that's not true. Where are you lying to yourself? This situation is calling you to force or to face a difficult truth. Know that once you admit the truth to yourself, to yourself, there will be relief. Okay, I had a hard time getting through reading that and the word force really stood out to me. And I'm getting that reference to Star Wars, the force. And interestingly enough, earlier this morning, I had a synchronicity and I did write it in my synchronicities journal about midichlorians. It's a Star Wars reference, and it's these intelligent life forms that live within the cells and connect you to the Force. A sensitive Jedi can use this connection to channel and use the Force. So look at the rest of the page. Oh my god, I'm supposed to show you guys the whole page. Look. Uh, yeah, so there's messages here for you. And this is a, a big breakthrough in your potential and, and what you're capable of doing. It's going to be much bigger than you expect or expected in the past. And you're going to, I think, have to kind of center yourself into your faith because I'm seeing like religious or spiritual factors being important here as well. Like make sure that you are staying in your truth, that you're not lying to yourself. Don't sell out. I just heard. Yeah, don't sell out. Stick to your integrity. Don't always go with what's the best, most lucrative option. Make sure that you're staying in what's true to your soul. Make sure that you're not compromising your integrity on your vision. Oh, that was another thing. Uh, where was it? Yeah, the director's cut reflects the director's original intent. Yeah, look, tell your story. I did say memoirs. Okay, so th these were for you. I mean, they're they're relevant for, for us. <laughs> I feel like I'm in this group as well. So the original intent, don't lose the original intent of why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, because when this gets big and it gets big fast, it's kind of going to test you, group number three, to stay in your integrity. I'm getting that very clearly. So make sure that you're operating from this divine place within you and that what you're offering and what you're sharing and what you're giving is pure. It's very important that that stays pure, that you keep things squeaky clean when it comes to what you're producing, the way you're producing it. Um, make sure that you're, they just said industry standards. Industry standards? If the industry standards aren't good enough, make sure that you're upgrading or um, operate within the industry standards so that things are uh, by the book. They're, they're telling me by the book. Yeah, we're getting a lot of legal stuff in this group. So make sure that you're doing things the right way for the right reasons. I think that's really the main message here, group number three. And I looked up at the time and it was 2333. Three, three. <laughs> yeah. Two being about the master builder energy, three being about this alignment, uh, body, mind, and soul, and also the support that you're getting through expressing your creative projects. All right, so that is what I see for you, group number three. What a fabulous reading and amazing massive breakthrough. I'm so excited for you. Let me know how this unfolds. Um, when it comes to timing, I wasn't called to really mention that in, the, in any of the other two groups, but they just actually told me to say something about that here. 
they're drawing me to the number two. Um, I'm seeing the spring, springtime could be significant, and the number two. So uh, the second month or the second of a month could be significant in the springtime. The second month is February, and we're past that at the time that I'm recording this video, although it is a timeless reading. There's something about this, the number two. Can I get more clarity, Spirit? 24. 224, they're saying. 2024. So it's this year. That's the year I'm recording this. 2024. And they're telling me springtime. Spring and summer. And they're saying don't hold back and don't hold on. Move and pivot, they just said as well. Move and pivot. Okay, um, so tell yourself the truth and adapt as you move through this process group number three. That is what I see for you. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that this reading helped. If you guys are interested in pur purchasing the Synchronicities Oracle, which is my new Oracle deck available for pre-order now through my website, which is linked below, you can do so. And the first 50 orders are getting special little goodies in their delivery package. Thank you for your support of my work here. We will see you in the next reading. Bye.